How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Now, with the increase in censorship across the board on the Internet, uh, depending on the country you're in, you might notice that, for example, ChatGPT is banned or other services or streaming services may not be available in your location. So understandably so, there's been a rise in interest in VPNs. And this is where I kind of come in to make things a little bit simpler, because if you're new to VPNs, you might kind of be a little bit intimidated um, when it comes to using a VPN. You might have heard terms like the kill switch, split tunneling, server disconnections and connections and whatnot and protocols and wireguard and open vpn and tcp and udp and so it can get a little bit confusing so today i just wanted to simplify things for you now i've got three of the best vpns right here and i'll talk about these in just a couple of minutes as soon as i demonstrate uh, how to use a vpn and what the features are for and what the features that you need basically Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate using ExpressVPN. And by the way, when it comes to links to pricing, discounts, and full reviews, if you're interested in checking out the full reviews, you'll find everything you need in the description down below. So starting off with ExpressVPN, as you can tell, there's a big on and off button. So ExpressVPN makes it incredibly easy and intuitive to use a VPN. This is sort of the selling point. And just because it's easy to use doesn't mean that you know, it lacks certain features or anything like that. No, it's made specifically to be as easy to use as possible, sort of like a plug and play kind of VPN. And it provides exceptional security and encryption and arguably the best privacy policy in the business. And what I mean by a good privacy policy or the best privacy policy in this case uh, is the no logs policy. And a no logs policy is the promise that the VPN provider will not collect any of your information when you're connected to the VPN. Of course, if you didn't know, when you connect to the VPN, you are sort of left kind of vulnerable when it comes to your data and browsing history and everything like that. Basically, your logs will be recorded by a bad VPN provider and a good VPN provider will basically keep no logs at all, even in the case when the authorities might ask for them they will still not provide anything because they haven't recorded any of your logs. And all these VPNs do have a solid no logs policy that is audited by independent audit companies. More information in the full review. Let's get down to the uh, features right here. So as you can tell, there's the on and off button. And if you want to select a specific server, you can go to the locations. They're all categorized by continents here. And, you know, it's kind of straightforward. You can click the arrow right here to, you know, pick a specific state for example or just click on it and it will select the closest united states or closest server depending on the country uh, you choose okay so before going to the server and picking it uh, you want to understand a little bit more about the features so that the next time you hear what protocols are or what the kill switch or split tunneling is, you will understand what these are for. So the kill switch called network lock in ExpressVPN, the kill switch will make sure that you're only going to be connected to the internet while you're secured by the VPN. Uh, so if you, for whatever reason, get disconnected from the VPN unexpectedly, the VPN will cut your internet connection so that you don't connect back to your internet service providers uh, servers this way it prevents any rare ip leaks and if you're in a censorship heavy country for example or if you just simply don't want your isp to know what you're doing online the kill switch is a great tool and then you've got split tunneling and split tunneling will allow you to choose which applications are routed through the vpn tunnel and which are not uh, so this is a very useful tool if you don't want all of your device to be affected by the VPN or if you want everything to be affected by the VPN except for selected uh, applications. Now, a VPN, basically what it does is that it routes your data through the servers. If I haven't explained that yet, it routes your data through the encrypted VPN servers before it reaches the Internet. And so that's how a VPN works. Now, because of the time that it takes to encrypt data, your speeds are lowered and sometimes dramatically. Now, a good VPN will make sure that your speed while connected to the vpn is about as close as it can get to your base speed and this is where 
using the best protocol comes in. Now, I like to use lightweight UDP. Automatic is always a great choice when you're using a VPN, especially if you're in a restrictive country or you're on a network where, for example, the fastest protocol may not work and a protocol like OpenVPN TCP or UDP may work better albeit maybe, you know, three to 5% slower, it still works just fine. Uh, overall with Express, Northern Surfshark, the speeds are near immaculate. Uh, it's, it's almost as fast as your base speed, really. You won't notice uh, any speed drops, any significant speed drops for that matter. And so, yeah, Lightway is the one I like to go for. And that's pretty much it. Now that uh, you know what the basic uh, features are, you know, you just want to select the best protocol. For example, it's Lightway UDP and Express, Nord Links in Nord VPN, and the WireGuard one in Surfshark. Uh, and you know whether or not you want to use the kill switch or split tunneling, click OK. And then you want to go to locations. And let's say we want to connect to hmm, somewhere in Europe. Let's just go with Germany. Now that it's on, you see it's green. I'll go back to my IP address finder. He can use any IP address finder. Earlier, I was just connected to Dallas. I'll refresh it. And now my internet or my browser, my entire device basically uh, will think that I am in Germany now because I'm using the German ExpressVPN servers. And it is as simple as that. That's basically it. Now, ExpressVPN is overall the best VPN uh, if you're looking for something that's easy to use, very easy to use and the best for uh, accessing streaming services. It's got the strictest no logs policy in the business, and they have been tested in a real life example in Turkey when the Turkish government seized an Express VPN server in 2017, and they were still unable to extract anything that leads to a specific IP address, which is amazing. It's just a real life example. Uh, showing that ExpressVPN really take their users' privacy seriously. And so I would say that ExpressVPN is the easiest VPN to use, very consistent, very reliable, uh, and it's the best overall. Now with NordVPN, I would say this is the most well-rounded or the best well-rounded VPN that packs a bunch of features for a very reasonable price while still giving you a whole lot of performance all of the basic features such as the kill switch, split tunneling, and the best protocol right here, NordLynx protocol. And you've got a lot of servers in all of that for a very reasonable price. So if you're looking for an all-rounder, especially for a VPN that kind of gives you a mini antivirus completely for free, uh, then NordVPN is a great choice. Now, if you're looking for the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing any of the necessary security features, such as the kill switch and split tunneling, and you still get, of course, the WireGuard protocol, which is a very fast protocol. Uh, you've got a nice speed tester. You've got rotating IP in no borders mode, which will help you out if you're in a censorship heavy country or if you're having trouble getting around the network firewall, if you're in a library, for example. And you will be able to virtually secure an unlimited number of devices with just one subscription with Surfshark. So you can share it around with your friends and family without really worrying about any uh, limits to the simultaneous connections. I think there is a hard cap though at like probably between 50 and 100 devices. I haven't really tested it myself, but I mean, yeah, you can share it with your friends and family. Uh, whereas with NordVPN, you get to secure up to six devices with one subscription and with Express, you get to secure up to five. Uh, pretty good numbers, uh, but if you have more than five or six devices, then yeah, you can go with Surfshark. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Again, when it comes to using a VPN, no matter which application you go for, be it Express, Nord, or Surfshark, the things that I taught with Express VPN will also apply with Nord. I mean, obviously the way to navigate the VPN is a little bit different. You've got extra uh, features here and there. You can check the review if you want to learn a little bit more about them. But it's basically the same principle. You click on the server, you connect to it, you want to go to the kill switch, you go to the kill switch, you activate it. Here you notice that there is an app kill switch which will kill the application instead of the connection, the selected application. So there are differences here and there, but the basic principles are still the same. So once you know how to use one VPN, you will know how to use all the others. 
If you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, I'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. And of course, they're all covered by a 30 day money back guarantee, just in case you're not satisfied for whatever reason. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.